Hey guys, how are we all doing? Back with another video. Hi guys. Um, yeah, so as you can tell from the clothes we're wearing, literally straight into uh, part two. Um, even though this is going to release a day late for you guys. But welcome back. Obviously it goes without saying, if you haven't seen part one, go watch it first. But more importantly, if you haven't seen the original Oversimplified video, make sure you go check that out and give yeah. him his like, his subscribe and his comment because this is all his hard work. We're just uh, reacting to it. Appreciate Someone it. said leeching. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more inclined to say leeching. <laughs> I'm, I'm being educated, actually. <laughs> yeah, but um, hey, it is what it is. Um, yeah, all credit, all credit goes to him, obviously, as always. Um, but we're going to jump straight into the next part. You know, like, comment, subscribe for us if you're interested. All that good stuff, man. We got, we got videos coming. Anything you want to see, just drop it down in the comments below. God, I, you know what? That flowed off the tongue, man. I sound like an actual YouTuber, dude. You know? That was Chris. Yeah, wasn't you it? know one of those guys that do YouTube. I sound <laughs> like one of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hey, thanks for joining us again, guys. We're going to jump straight in because uh, it's a forty-minute one. This is made possible by Incogni. Use code Oversimplified in the link below for an exclusive sixty percent off an annual Incogni plan. Also. Make sure to grab our Roman coffee. These look cool. I like this. Do you late. want one? Don't make me mention yeah. it a third time. Or uh, mm. you know what. You must <laughs> me. Who were they? Hannibal's army had survived its famous crossing of the Alps, and he was now in Italy. With Hannibal's arrival, the Roman consul Scipio hit the ground running. In typical <laughs> Roman fashion, he marched his army straight at the enemy. And Hannibal began preparing for his first combat with Rome on Italian soil. Before the battle, Hannibal wanted to inspire his men, so he staged a gladiatorial death match oh, between okay. captured Celt prisoners, with the winner getting prizes and freedom. He then explained that the like whole thing was a metaphor. It? A metaphor? For what? You! These warriors are you! You're trapped in Italy with no escape. Your only choice now is to fight and win. What about the dead guy? That's you if you don't win. And the prizes? <laughs> That's what you stand to gain by winning. And the fact that I've soiled myself with this excitement? Thing. That... No, that's not part of the metaphor. <laughs> okay. Hannibal also <laughs> smashed in the head of a goat. Again, for inspiration. Yes. Scipio, on no. the other hand, <laughs> now arriving in the area opted for the more classic route of a rousing pre-battle speech. Look at them, men. Weak, starved by the Alps, while we are the strongest military in the world. This will be easy, like 10,000 horse-sized ducks fighting a baby-sized baby. It'll be like Mike Tyson in his prime, kicking a baby. A tug of war between 10 sumo wrestlers and a... Help me out here, Ralph. A baby, sir? Yes! Yes, that's it. A baby. The point is, there is absolutely no possible way we could lose a battle this easy. See, I, if you've watched enough oversimplified videos, you know this turn of voice. Yeah. This means there's a there's an upset on the way. Um, but can you imagine like being a, a Carthaginian soldier and you get to watch like captured prisoners fight? I know that was kind of a done thing internationally back then, but like actually having the experience of watching two grown men fight to the death. That's crazy. It's just mad, isn't it? Like, if you were just a, a Roman citizen, it was like, I'm bored today, what do you want to do? Oh, I've got two tickets. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I've got two tickets. Yeah, I don't know if they've got tickets for the car <laughs> scene, but I've got two tickets to Man vs. Tiger later on. <laughs> oh, no, I, I couldn't. I get stressed out when you're watching, like, MMA. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be, oh, that'd be brilliant. Well, it would, it would be cool to see. Do you know what I mean? I know it's a moral that. It would be so cool to watch two geezers just fight it out the swords. It would be like normal back then, though. It yeah. would be immoral back then. It would be yeah. normal. So, if everybody's ready, That's it, on it. my mark. <laughs> <Go! laughs> <laughs> The Battle of Tecinus was over almost as soon as it had begun, as the Romans found themselves completely outmatched by Hannibal's famed lightning-fast Numidian cavalry, oh, of course, a yeah. key element in Hannibal's devastating double envelopment tactics. In the chaos, Scipio was wounded. Thankfully, according to some ancient writers, his handsome 17-year-old son, Scipio the Younger, <laughs> saw his father fall. 
Scipio the Younger supposedly saved his father, and in the process, earned himself a lot of mm -hmm. daddy's kisses. The <laughs> Romans ended up fleeing the area, destroying the bridge behind them as they went. For a nation so overtly confident in victory, yeah. believing Hannibal to be an easy kill, the Romans found themselves running away with their tail between their legs. That's it crazy. Was humiliating. It? Rome was like, yeah. I'm out. I suppose when you're that self confident as well, and you suffer a, a defeat that early on, it's panic stations, then, isn't it? Yeah. This is like, you, if anything, you want to have been there before. If yeah. you, you want to have been in a position where you've lost the battle and then come back to win the war, which some of these soldiers probably have. But you certainly don't want to resort back to panic stations. And everyone's, you know, everyone loses the reds. Yeah, it's, I feel like it's crazy watching and hearing about like the Romans when you compare it to the First Punic War. Yeah, as well, and how yeah. they were in that. Well, yeah, because they were the underdog then. Weren't they? Yeah. And you know who thought so as well? The Celts. They began <laughs> flocking to Hannibal's side, just as he'd hoped. Even Celtic troops fighting for Rome in the Roman camp began to reconsider. Man, I'm thinking we should try to join Hannibal. I hear you. Maybe we should bring him a gift. What do you think he'd like? Hmm. Oh, I know. Hey, Hannibal. We want to join your side, and we brought you a present. A gift? For me? I hope it's Roman heads. <laughs> oh, please be Roman heads. Hey. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Running away from Hannibal was humiliating enough. But having dozens of Romans beheaded in the night, now that's embarrassing. Tachinus had been a relatively small battle, but the psychological impact it had early yeah. on was huge. And it was only just a taste of what Hannibal was capable of. Despite the shocking initial loss, however, Rome still didn't seem to fully understand the danger posed by the monster now loose Shit, in their territory. Yeah. The Senate was full of excuses. It's those traitorous Celts. That's why we lost. Yeah, and it was a cavalry battle. Wait until Hannibal faces our almighty legions. And our consul was bald. Once he faces our other fully follicled consul, then he will really <laughs> pee his pants. That other consul, Longus, had been in the south all this time, preparing to invade Africa. He had seen some success, even capturing Malta. But then he heard the news. <laughs> Hannibal's in Italy? Hannibal <laughs> one road is. Home? But, but I was going to be the big boy. I suppose, yeah, he at this point wouldn't even know that Hannibal had made the full journey round. No. It helps. Yeah. Because you, you just, I suppose he's sizing this war up like the first Punic War is like, we'll just invade, both your uncle, we'll get in there. Yeah. He's declare just a peace treaty. It's not going to be hard. Yeah. In Italy? And I'm being ordered home? But, but I was going to be the big boy. I was going to yeah. invade Carthage and win the war. <laughs> Well, you can be a big boy at home. No! Does somebody need a nap, sir? No! 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 And so Longus brought his army on the long journey north. When he arrived in the area to decisively neutralize Hannibal, the two consuls joined their forces together, creating a double consular army. But the two consuls weren't exactly on the same page. Having a nice rest there, old man? I'm wounded, Longus. Pathetic. You don't understand. He's more dangerous than we thought. Maybe for you. Whoops. Listen, we can't just march straight at him like we normally do. We need to train our men through the winter, and we'll try again in spring. Sorry, I don't take advice from a bowling ball. Hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Any day now. I'm coming! Just you wait. <laughs> oh, Scipio, you feeble old man. <laughs> <laughs> Scipio was apparently quite cautious after his recent encounter with Hannibal, while Longus, typically yeah. Roman, couldn't yeah. wait to give Hannibal a swirly. So who would get their way? Well, when two consuls joined their forces, it turned out the Romans had an interesting system in place. Sorry, I, the one thing I have noticed is, like, just from just going up these videos alone, the mentality of the Romans is very, like, it's patriarchal, isn't it? Like, the young and ambitious constantly look to overthrow the old and the wise yeah do you know what i mean yeah it's not it's always about being bigger and better than the last or bigger and better than the one next year it's like it promotes egotistical people to like an extreme extent doesn't it yeah because they don't like have respect for the leaders all of them do they no. they've got a chance to overthrow them because surely as the young general that's about to go fight hannibal 
Hannibal, not Young Council, sorry. The first thing you'd want to do is talk to someone that had already fought Hannibal. Yeah. Do you know what, what I mean? What tactics did you use? Yeah, but they're so... Pedro Apple wasn't the right word, but they're just so egotistical. Mm. Consuls joined their forces. It turned out the Romans had an interesting system in place. They would each take turns being the one in charge. Consul 1 would lead one day, then Consul 2 the next. Back and forth, back and forth. As you can imagine, when the two consuls didn't agree, things didn't go so well. In this case, due to Scipio's injury, Longus probably assumed even more command than normal. Hannibal had Celtic spies in the Roman camp. He fully understood the Roman system and Longus's hot-headed nature. And he knew he could exploit it. For goodness sake! What's wrong, sir? I'm trying to order some pizza. But I keep getting fed all these personalized ads about being a hothead. He's not a VPN. He does. Yes, sir. Look at this. Butt insurance? Who would buy butt insurance? Yeah, that sounds really <laughs> sure. It seems like a lot of data brokers have collected data on you. They could sell that data to Hannibal. What? But don't worry, because you can get rid of that data with today's wonderful <laughs> smart. Oh, it's not not a VPN. Colony. Hooray! Oh, I've been getting at you for some time to protect your personal data online. But you're a nimwit, aren't you? You didn't do it, did you? I did. Typical. Didn't and I? now would you look at you that? Did. Yeah. Tons of data brokers have collected a heck of a lot <laughs> of your personal data and might sell it to third parties like advertisers or insurance companies without <laughs> you even knowing. Ever wonder where Sally and the Butter Insurance the Company anymore, got your name, number, address, social security yeah. number, yeah. 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 color from? Yeah, I don't know if it's Probably a dirty data uh. broker. We could painstakingly contact the hundreds of brokers that have our data and politely ask them to delete it. That process would only take the average human about 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. And that's why you need Incogni. I was shocked to find how many data brokers Incogni had tracked. I wonder how much they paid to get over But all I had to do was put this out there. Do you know what I mean? It's got to be massive. Yeah. On behalf, because this is more effective than like putting an advert on a TV. You know, the views that YouTube does now compared to like standard TV. Yeah. But after it's on telly, it's your chance to like go and make so a drink. Yeah. So do whatever. You don't sit and watch them. Yeah. But you just skip them. Don't even touch. Oversimplified to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. That's incogni.com slash oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting so is my channel. So is Incogni going to be inserted in now? I'm not sure. Where were we? Oh yeah. Roman heads, a double consular <laughs> army, and a hothead. Hannibal needed to keep That's smashing the Romans in battle yeah. Yeah. to maintain the loyalty of the Celts. And so he was eager to fight another oh. battle. The combined Roman force possibly outnumbered him, so he carefully crafted a clever trap, and he made sure to spring it while Longus was still in charge. The plan began with his army getting an early night's sleep. All right, boys, time mm -hmm. for the lights out. Oh, guys, got the yes. <laughs> Sorry, but we got a big day ahead of us. Tomorrow, we're gonna massacre the Romans. Yay! Good night, boys. No. Dream of revenge. <laughs> Gorzog, send out the cavalry. He's like an orc. <laughs> what? That night, Hannibal's Numidian cavalry made their way over to the Roman camp, arriving just before dawn. <laughs> hey, Romans. Wakey, wakey. What? what the? What's going on? Hey, Longus. Your butt smells like a butt. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> Scipio, awaken the troops. Longus, these playground insults are clearly meant to lure you out. Well, it's working. Send out the troops. Longus, it's clearly a trap. And I'm falling for it. Send out the troops. <laughs> hey, wake up. You're heading out for battle. What? But we haven't had breakfast. We're skipping breakfast. I don't think you can do that. As the Romans hurried out of camp, the Numidians began luring them back to the Carthaginian camp, where these gentle angels were just awakening from their slumber. Eat up, boys. We're having pancakes. <laughs> While the Carthaginians were enjoying their hearty breakfast, the starving Romans were still on their way. Hurry up! We have to catch those Numidians. Hey, why have you stopped marching? Wait, imagine oh, like being on foot and you're chasing cavalry. Oh no, yeah. It's like, what are we even doing here? Like, is this a serious attempt at an attack? Nothing about how we get there. Front of us. Well, get your gluteus maximus in the water! <laughs> 
Tell me when. Uh, other way. Yeah, uh, it goes to I can't say that quick. There, that will do. All right, boys, time to lather up. This oil will insulate you from the cold. <laughs> it also smells like lavender. Mm. Like, <laughs> Paint a Carthaginian soldier. Pushy. After the elf. Yeah, after the elf. <laughs> Seems alright, after the elf. <laughs> Get ready to fight, men. S sir? I think the water from the river is beginning to ice over. I, I can't move. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You thought war would be fun? Sitting around a nice hot campfire playing truth or dare with your friends? Welcome to the real world! <laughs> Who do you like? <laughs> Karen? <laughs> hey, look guys, the Romans are here. <laughs> Having perfectly orchestrated events so that his enemy was cold, tired, and hungry, while his men were well rested and covered in oil. When the two sides engaged one another, the Romans were in no condition to fight. And the cherry on top? The previous night, Hannibal had sent out an elite force of men led by his brother to go and hide behind a bush. They suddenly <laughs> sprung out, encircling hey. the exhausted Romans, who were then cut to pieces. Once again, Hannibal's superior cavalry and double envelopment tactics had flummoxed the Romans. But the keyword at Trevia was control. Hannibal used his intel on the enemy and the environment of the battlefield to carefully control the conditions of battle, creating lots of little advantages for himself that paved the way to success. And concealing troops for an ambush? All of these things are what make Hannibal yeah. the genius he's remembered as today. It's weird though, because he has like a first rate army at his disposal and he still reverts to guerrilla tactics because he's in enemy territory, which makes him even more effective of a leader. Do you know what I mean? He's... Yeah, he's clever with it, isn't he? Yeah, it's almost like his men are fighting like it's their territory rather than the Romans. Yeah, yeah. As what was the oil problem for? Keep yeah, more. I don't know. He said it'll insulate you. I don't know how true that is. I thought it made them slippy when they're like, yeah, maybe. No, yeah, that's a tough ball. He managed to escape <laughs> the battlefield with a small number of troops. Disgraced, he didn't want the Senate to find out what had happened, and he began obscuring communications back to Rome. Longus, where have you been? We've been looking for you. Uh, nowhere in particular. Longus, 30,000 men are missing. Do you know where they are? Uh, they're taking a bath. 30,000 men? <laughs> All in a bath? Yes. Longus, what's under that rug? <laughs> Aurora Borealis? Aurora <laughs> Borealis? Uh, oh, well, that's my consulship over. Good luck with Hannibal. Bye! <laughs> Trivia! I've had a disaster like, yeah. for the Romans. And as even more Celts oh began gosh. flocking to Hannibal, Rome largely lost its control over Cisalpine Gaul. In Rome, mm -hmm. complacency turned to alarm. <laughs> Hannibal had outwitted them on their own soil and inflicted a costly defeat. But with that, Scipio and Longus's terms as consul were over. They were replaced with two new consuls, Servilius and Flaminius. The Romans may now evil. have he begun to it. realize the trouble they were in and the genius Hannibal had shown in invading Italy. The Romans had expected to be the ones controlling this war. Remember, they thought they were going to invade Carthage. Now their plans lay in ruins <laughs> and they were levying 11 new legions to deal with the threat. Hannibal had completely redefined the war. But Hannibal had a little problem of his own. Things had gone well so far, but the Celts were notoriously fickle, and Hannibal needed to ensure he maintained their alliance and his base of support in Italy. Any Celts he captured fighting for Rome, he treated extremely well and allowed them to return to their homes. But the longer he hung around in their territory, eating all their food and leaving yeah. beard trimmings in their sinks, the more resentful they may become. They wanted to go south and plunder some Roman booty. And Hannibal also hoped to sway Rome's other Italian allies in the south to his side. So from here, the path was clear. Hannibal had to... You know what? I do forget that Rome was just made up of more than just one giant republic at the time. I do forget there's other allies within Roman territory that don't... Yeah, I just thought that. Obviously, Rome is like the city. It's not the whole <clears throat> country. There's so many other different parts of the country. Yeah. <sighs> move south 
just one problem. There were two main routes Hannibal could take to move south. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly where the two new Roman consuls had taken fortified positions. If Hannibal tried to move on them, he'd be fighting from a disadvantaged position and could be bottled in. There is a third option. Ooh, tell me, tell me. We mm. could move through this vast impassable marshland flooded with dirty, stinky, disease-infested water that at times would come up to our necks. But there's no way we would attempt that, right? That'd be crazy, right? Hannibal? Hannibal <laughs> man took you through the Alps. I know, I know, yeah. On Earth. Almost as crazy as when he crossed the Alps. Imagine three full days unable to sit or lie down because there's nowhere to sit or lie down. Meaning four full days without sleep, slugging through heavy mud. You contract uh. cholera, your foot falls off, and uh. Joe Bob directly in front of you won't stop pooping in your path. In fact, everybody's pooping in your path. Some delirious, sleepless men would see clumps of mud and say, Man, I could just sink into that. And then they would. When black animals died, it gave nearby men a chance to rest, but only for a few moments before they were whipped back into line. Even Hannibal himself couldn't escape the torture of it. Hey, Hannibal, if we see a Starbucks, can we stop? We need to take a leak. <laughs> What? Jeez, Hannibal. Looks like you picked up a nasty eye infection. Normally for this sort of thing, we just wash it out with some clean water. But as you can see, water everywhere, but it's full of Jim Bob's poop. No worries, Doc. I'll just take care of it myself. That'll be $3,000. When the now <laughs> Hannibal and his army emerged from the swamp, they oh my were gosh. shattered. But he had just managed to slip 50,000 men right past the Romans into rich Etrurian lands where he could replenish his supplies and his Celt allies could go crazy securing Roman loot and booty. As fields and villages went up in flames, one Roman consul couldn't help but notice the hot-headed Flaminius feeling it was his responsibility to protect these lands rather than waiting for his co-consul to come join him immediately left to go chase Hannibal. Now, this Flaminius was an interesting character. He was um, like, can you imagine going through that swamp, marsh, and all that disease, and then you come out to like Roman wine vineyard country? Yeah. Like that would be like it's just a stark contrast, isn't it? All of a sudden, you're in these bright green pastures with like olive trees and wine and bread. Part of you would think, have I died? Yeah, it's big like... heaven. But other than the legions of Romans coming over the hill, this is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that would be such a weird contrast for the troops. And if anything is going to get your morale back up, it's a couple of weeks plundering the Roman countryside, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. That was more brutal than the Alps. Probably choose to do the Alps again rather than do that. Pick your poison, isn't it? Oh. Is what the Romans called a new man. He came from the lower plebeian classes of Roman society. And as a result, he reportedly had kind of a screw you attitude to the establishment and a big old arrogant <laughs> chip on his shoulder. Picture Sid Vicious wearing a toga. That's Flaminius. And Hannibal. Thanks to his spies, knew everything. Just as with Longus, Hannibal knew Flaminius was just the kind of man he could lure into a trap. Hannibal led Flaminius to the entrance of a narrow pass along the north shore of Lake Trasimene. Flaminius watched as Hannibal's army entered the pass. I've done it. I've spotted the enemy. Uh, sir? That big <laughs> follow us sign seems kind of like they're trying to lure you in. Yes, Gareth, and I'm taking the bait. Sir, this really seems like a trap. Yes, Gareth, and I'm falling for it. <laughs> Daylight was fading, so for now, the Romans set up camp. The two armies encamped across the lake from one another, and night fell over the two camps. In the morning, Flaminius <laughs> would catch up to Hannibal, and he would be the hero of Rome. For now, the Romans got nice and comfy in their beds. Good night, Flaminius. Oh, not again. Good night, Rome. You wouldn't Good say. Evening, Hannibal. <laughs> During the night, Hannibal ordered Splinter total sir. stealth. As tens of thousands of troops. The Romans love the kick. The wooded hills above the pass. Completely undetected by Rome's scouts. <laughs> 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 
Let's go, girls. Flaminius <laughs> crossed the wet shores to try to catch Hannibal. As he did, even the weather seemed to be on Hannibal's side. A thick fog rose from the surface of the lake, obscuring visibility. Look at this. This is perfect. <laughs> the mist will obscure our approach. <laughs> Hannibal will never see me coming. Sir? Why does it sound like 50,000 Carthaginians are charging down the hill towards us? You mean 50,000 Carthaginians are charging right into my trap! The Romans found themselves completely hemmed in on all sides. With zero visibility in the fog, the fighting... Can you just imagine that? That's like 50, 60, 70, that's 80,000 people. That's like Wembley Arena just having a fight yeah. Chaos. That's insane. I could just... You'll never be able to see a scene like that in a lot of times, you know what I mean? No. Just, and you would look just to look, to watch from a hillside what like a battle around this time period would look like. And just watching like militaristic tactics play out in front of you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's terrifying and chaotic. Troops were pushed into the lake in their heavy armor where they were either cut down or drowned. And Flaminius, who likely stood out like a sore thumb in his console attire, caught the attention of one Celt warrior, with his head possibly swirling with thoughts of how the Romans had decimated his homeland. According to the ancient writers, this Celt took his chance. This is like oversimplified in a three hour long massacre. 15,000 oh Romans were killed and an equal number captured. 2,000 Carthaginians, that's it. Wiped out One last. Along with their consul. During the battle, the Roman vanguard had managed to break through at the front. I'm not going to lie, I thought this for a minute was going to be a problem for Hannibal. Yeah. I don't know why, there was something about his well-designed character which made me think, oh, he looks like an antagonist of some sort. Isn't it mad though, he's like the main consulate yeah. for them. And like, obviously the history writers just know that some random Celtic guy yeah. killed him. No recognition or anything. That was the scene, that was when he jumped off the rock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Climbed the hill above the fog. When the mist cleared, what they saw was a blood red lake and a sea of Roman bodies. Worse yet, when the other consuls sent cavalry to try to aid Flaminius's doomed legions, they too were caught and defeated. A double disaster. <laughs> yeah, because he's on your doorstep now. ...into a frenzy. For the second time, Hannibal had completely decimated an entire Roman army. Romans were dying by the tens of thousands. Common citizens began flocking to the city for safety. Women waited by the city gates in tears, hoping to hear news of loved ones. This one man, having just led his battered army across the Alps the previous year, now stood less than a hundred miles from Rome. To this point, he had been a problem. Now, Hannibal was a crisis. <laughs> yeah. And in just a crisis, a Rome took desperate measures. They actually had a system in place when dealing with an emergency of this magnitude. They would forgo their two consul power sharing system and instead temporarily give one man near total power and authority to be as decisive as he needed and hopefully salvage the situation. This all powerful position in Rome's government had a name, dictator. It's actually where we get the word. But unlike modern dictators, Roman ones didn't score perfect rounds of golf <laughs> or write bears through the Siberian tundra. They held their power for just six months before they were required to give it up. Sorry. That's crazy, isn't it? I'm pretty sure... No, I might have said it, so I don't know if it's true. And in Rome's Wait and say. Meeting, yeah, the yeah. man chosen to be dictator in 217 BC, one of the most highly esteemed members of the Roman Senate, Fabius Maximus. So how would Fabius, as dictator, confront Hannibal? Well, Fabius understood that marching all of Rome's young men straight into the Roman meat grinder was bleeding Rome dry. Hannibal was clearly too dangerous to face. Be fair though, like before he says, well, because I don't know the act, but well, obviously you know, the Romans must win eventually. But I don't know how he went about it. What do you do in this situation? 
Yeah, you know, as, as you say, you can't just build another army and just send them at Hannibal because that clearly doesn't work. No, and they haven't got time to work out how to kind of fight back, you know, like yeah. with his train of thought. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way they could convince the Celts to turn on Hannibal. Maybe. So it would have more of an internal struggle that you could capitalize on. Maybe, but I feel like a lot of the Celts just hate Rome already. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. offer them something pretty good to get them to change. Yeah, but they're too far gone. Mm. In battle, however, and they're winning with him. He was also yeah, stuck true. in their territory with dwindling manpower and forced to live off the land. It wasn't a sustainable position to be in long term, and he could only remain there for so long. So, if Rome avoided battle with Hannibal to prevent any mm -hmm. more crippling losses and instead simply maneuvered around him, blocking supplies and taking out smaller contingents where possible, Hannibal would gradually become okay. weaker while they would gradually become stronger. And so Fabius presented his new idea to the Roman Senate. Okay, guys, I have an idea. See if you can follow me here, okay? Instead of fighting Hannibal, when he approaches, we run away. <laughs> <laughs> Fabius's strategy couldn't have been any less Roman. Romans were meant to march headfirst into battle, not run away from it. <laughs> it seemed cowardly, and Fabius was extremely unpopular. At this point, Hannibal was continuing south. He had to stay on the move to keep his army fed, and he was still aiming to undermine Rome's alliances in the south. As he went, in a calculated display of aggression, he devastated the Roman countryside and killed many Romans, all in plain sight of Fabius and his army. We're just gonna stand here? Yes. Are you a coward? No. But Fabius, that's my farm. Well, McDonald, <laughs> thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> You're a hero now. Think of the stories you'll tell. Old McDonald had a farm. <laughs> Shut up. But you know, you know what else? gets me? He has to actually record that cry. Yeah. In like yeah. his own house. <laughs> like, can you imagine walking in when he's doing it? <laughs> oh, you'd have to be like, do not come in, yeah, do not come yeah. home. I've, I've got to get full seriousness for this. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Hated Fabius's strategy? <laughs> Hannibal. He understood the danger he was in. Turning Rome's allies against her required Hannibal to keep smashing the Romans in battle. He couldn't do that if Fabius wouldn't fight him. Multiple times, Hannibal tried to goad Fabius into a fight, but Fabius wouldn't bite. Failing that, he tried to turn Rome against Fabius. According to the writer Livy, he burned down all the farms he could, but any farm he learned was owned by Fabius himself. He left well alone. Hey, Fabius, why isn't he burning down your farm? You got some sort of a secret deal with him? What? Of course not! Hey, Hannibal! Mm -hmm. What? Burn my farm too, please! What? Burn my farm too, please! <laughs> no! Remember our secret deal! That is so clever. Yeah, yeah, to be fair. Well, you gotta admit, he's a genius. Hannibal, he's so clever. however, was that he had to stay on the move to keep supplying his army from the local lands. At one point, he entered Campania, one of the richest regions of Italy. Great for resupply and great for showing up Fabius in front of Rome's South Italian allies. Capua. But he was caught Capua. in a valley, and Fabius quickly moved to block his escapes. Ha <laughs> ha! We've got him! After he's used up all the valley's supplies, he'll starve. Uh, sir, what are all those lights leaving <laughs> the valley? Is he trying to escape? Lights in plain view. Well, that's a trap if I've ever seen one. Suspecting a trap, Fabius refused to budge, but other Romans in the valley rushed to confront Hannibal, only to find the Carthaginian army was actually just a herd of oxen with torches tied to their heads. They then clever. found themselves caught in an ambush. With the Romans distracted, that's Hannibal's so clever. Army. So clever. Oh my god, he's literally a genius. Where where would you get that idea? And also, I bet the oxen are thinking, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> my head's on fire. Like major in anything, he's majored in war. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Was able to slip away into the night, unopposed. Classic Hannibal. <laughs> For all his inaction, the dissatisfied Romans mockingly dubbed him Fabius the Delayer. But the thing is, Fabius's strategy was probably the best thing he could have done. 
He was right that constant encounters with Hannibal were bleeding Rome dry. And the time he took allowed Rome some breathing room to recover their forces when they desperately needed to, while putting Hannibal into an increasingly more difficult position. Modern historians view Fabius' strategy as generally a good idea. To this day, the act of not engaging an enemy, but instead gradually wearing them down, is still referred to as the Fabian strategy. I love how they've showed the Americans as in this picture as, oh, this is the example we're going to use for not engaging the enemy. <laughs> when is America everyone? We're going to let you have that one. <laughs> we're not going to go to war. I don't think America has ever done that. This term finally came to an end. The Senate couldn't have been happier. It was time to start fighting again. However, they probably had a little chat about how they were going to go about it. See, Hannibal's tactics up until now had been very sneaky. Or, if you're a Roman, you might say dishonorable. <laughs> I'm sick of it! Every time we try to take this guy down, we march straight at him. But then, oh no, Hannibal's hiding in a bush. Hannibal's got 30,000 men up a tree. At this point, I'm not convinced my wife isn't just Hannibal wearing a disguise. <laughs> Cooey! <laughs> Look, this time, we obviously have to switch something up. Now granted, we're Roman, so we're gonna march straight at him without thinking. That can't be helped. It's in our blood. But I have a proposition. This time, when we march straight at him, we do it with a massive army. I'm talking like 80,000 men. It won't matter what kind of shenanigans he pulls. He can hide in all the bushes he wants. There's no way he can possibly beat off. 80,000 men! <laughs> I mean, so he could give it a go. <laughs> I'm sure you give it a go. I'm sure, I'm sure you've already beat up 80,000 men. <laughs> Together, a massive army, the biggest Rome had ever fielded, to put Hannibal away once and for all, to gather the men required, two thirds of them ended up being completely inexperienced. But how much experience does it take to be expendable war fodder? As this massive army set out in the summer of 216 BC, the Romans knew they needed to win this battle. Just one victory over Hannibal would likely be enough to end his entire campaign. And this time, their overwhelming manpower gave them confidence they could do it. Hannibal had taken position at the town of Cannae, where he had captured an important Roman supply depot. With Fabius gone, Hannibal knew a battle was likely coming, and he was eager to fight it on his terms. But when his men looked out at the Roman camp, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. That army's huge! There's no way we can possibly beat off all these men! How are we gonna beat off all of these men? <laughs> you know what I mean. I think he's right, Hannibal. Hannibal is then said to have replied, Gisco, my friend, don't worry. There may be a lot of them, but amongst their ranks, there's not a single man named Gisco. This joke was apparently so funny that his officers began to laugh and laugh. And when his men in the camp heard the laughter, they were like, hey, they're laughing. I guess that means we're going to win the battle. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> As for the Romans, the consuls were another pairing between an inexperienced hothead and a wise scholar. Although, the main historian from this era was good friends with Paulus's family, so take that with a grain of salt. On his day of command, the rash and hasty Varro, despite the apparent pleas from Paulus, sent the army out for battle. And when Hannibal saw this, he did the same. And here comes the single largest battle of the Second Punic War Gosh. and one of the most renowned battles in history. Are you back in? I feel like Hannibal's got the brains and stuff, but Rome's got the manpower now. Um, but you did say before, you were like, oh no, Rome wins eventually. Well, they kind of have to because they went on to one of the biggest empires, and that's what it's human. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, but Rome can still Rome could lose this battle and then win later on. I think I want to back Hannibal, you know. Back in Hannibal. Yeah. All right. The infamous battle. Yeah, I'll back Hannibal. Can I? Okay. 
In all the pre-battle maneuvering, I feel quite naive because I genuinely don't know. Was fighting from the south. This meant the seasonal dust-carrying winds were to his back and blowing directly into the faces of the Romans. Like I said, control. After two years in Italy, Hannibal's infantry had dwindled to about forty thousand. The Romans possibly outnumbered him two to one. Their army was so big that their maniples stretched far deeper than they normally would. The Romans planned to charge Hannibal's thin, weak line like a battering ram and break it. They also chose a narrow battlefield in the hopes it would prevent Hannibal's far superior cavalry from being able to outmaneuver them. They wanted an honorable battle where pure strength rather than trickery would decide the outcome. If Hannibal had his say, however, trickery might end up having a lot to do with it. He ordered his line to position themselves as an outward bulge, with his weakest troops at the very center. Just behind them, out of sight from the Romans, stood the elite Libyan infantry, waiting for their moment to strike. The battle commenced as the mass of Roman troops smashed into the Carthaginian center. The shape of Hannibal's line ensured the overwhelming weight of the Romans hit his weakest troops first, and they were pushed yeah. back. Hannibal's yeah. outward bulge reversed inward, with the Romans being funneled in towards the weak center. Hannibal had positioned himself at the center to encourage the troops to hold out as long as possible against the Roman onslaught, because while the Romans were unleashing carnage on the center, Hannibal's cavalry needed time to do their job. The heavy cavalry on the left, after a barbaric fight, sent the Roman horse packing, with the consul Polus even sustaining a severe head injury. He managed to move into the center to keep the battle going. Then the heavy cavalry turned and approached Varro's cavalry from behind. At the first sight of the coming Carthaginian envelopment, Varro ordered his horsemen to flee the <laughs> battlefield. The Carthaginians had won the cavalry battle. But back in the center, according to some accounts, Hannibal's line did eventually end up caving to the massive weight of the Romans, and they began to flee. The Romans pushed deeper, and organization within the army likely broke down as they became a giant mass trying to massacre the fleeing Carthaginians. <laughs> they didn't realize that they were playing right into Hannibal's hands. At that moment, Hannibal's elite units, having done no fighting yet, and therefore fresh as a daisy, turned and smashed into the Roman sides. Many of these troops were wearing Roman helmets and armor they had picked up after previous battles, and the confused Romans may not have even realized uh, were the enemy. As Hannibal uh, managed yeah. to regain the composure of his center and encourage them back into the fight, the Carthaginian cavalry swooped in from uh. behind, and look, Oh, it's going to be a massacre, this. A military general's wet dream. The total <laughs> encirclement of a much larger force by a much smaller force. The Romans were trapped. Hannibal had unbelievably managed to use their own superiority in numbers against them. Rather than simply encircling them, he had actually allowed mm -hmm. them to use their own immense power and push themselves into an encircled position. This was the genius of Cani. And with that, the annihilation yeah, began. Right. Yeah, so For smart. hours, yeah. the Carthaginians slaughtered the helpless <laughs> Romans from all sides. The Wait, did you say for hours or Car four hours? The annihilation but, hours. began. For hours, the Carthaginians yeah. slaughtered the helpless Romans from Jesus, all sides. Man. The terrified Romans were so tightly packed that at times they couldn't even lift their arms oh to defend God. themselves. That the was killing went on so long that the Carthaginians became exhausted from the non-stop massacre. And by the time the butchery came to an end, the grim toll spoke for itself. To Hannibal's several thousand lost, the Romans suffered 60 to 80,000 dead or captured. Yet another... 60 to 80 thousand. Can you imagine how blood thickened you would be after that fight, even as a Carthaginian with a massive victory? I feel like mentally that's got to mess with your head, hasn't it? To see that level of murder, there is no way the human mind can comprehend that. No, that's or maybe I'm speaking from a modern perspective because 
But even be even by their standards, that is a lot of murder and death. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. You know, I think I feel like you'd be a little bit numb to it. I don't know. You wouldn't That's feel a way about it. But it's a lot. Another entire army wiped out by Hannibal. Many high-ranking Romans met their end at Cannae. Polis, for one, but also 80 senators and more. It's been estimated that 20% of Rome's male population, aged 18 to 50, died at Cannae. This was it. Hannibal's vengeance. The stunned Carthaginians, as they searched for their own survivors among the dead, couldn't believe the sight of it. An estimated 30,000 gallons of blood finally spilled on the battlefield. Rome's defeated cannon yeah. sent shockwaves throughout Italy. Just as That's got to be one of the biggest military victories ever. And I'm so ashamed that I'd never heard of that, to be honest. I didn't know anything about that, and I'm kind of ashamed. Yeah, because you obviously know about the whole elephants and the Alps and the bit about Hannibal. Yeah, I don't know much about this, this the Punic Wars, but to, yeah. to not know about that. Look, we know about marching the elephants across. I feel like most people would know that. But to not know about the Battle of Cannae. Okay, that's yeah. Yeah. That's so crazy. Hannibal had hoped most of southern Italy now defected to his side, including the second largest city on the peninsula. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hannibal, this is incredible. What could possibly come next? Next, Jim Bob. I've killed 150,000 Romans. I've turned her allies against her. That's it. That's vengeance. So let me tell you what comes next. Rome surrenders. Their territories are reduced. We recover our lost islands. And Carthage dominates the Mediterranean once again. But sir, what if they don't surrender? Jim Bob, did you <laughs> miss what just happened? Of course they're gonna surrender. Throughout his campaign, Hannibal had shown himself to be very adept at reading the Roman mind. But if he now thought that Rome might surrender, it was the first time yeah. he severely I underestimated them. That's too proud. To discover an extremely inconvenient fact about Rome. Rome never surrenders. At a Roman survivor's camp near Cannae, one young officer overheard some troops discussing how they would flee Rome. Drawing his sword, he threatened to cut down any man that would abandon Rome in its hour of need. That officer was Scipio the Younger. But soon enough, the Romans would come to call him Scipio. Africanus. Oh, uh, I did wrong earlier on. Of Rome. I thought he didn't Wait, have a man. Um, there's a part three coming. He never announces the next part. He must love this book in history, yeah. Yeah, because when I first heard Scipio, I knew I'd heard the name Scipio, Scipio Africanus. But I like guess. Junior. Yes, yeah, so this is the junior. So was that the good looking one also earlier on? The one that says, he looked like Patrick Swayze in uh, Point Break. Yeah, but then he got he got scared and all his hair fell out. Yeah, I <laughs> That was, I can't, oh, you know what? I'm honestly ashamed that I've never heard of the Battle of Cannae, to be honest. That was wicked. I really enjoyed that one. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, I like, you see, it's one of them. Like, I like to think you know, a fair bit about history and, you know, not all history in general, but certain time periods. So when I come across, a subject that I'm completely ignorant to. It's kind of exciting as well because if you're interested in it, there's a new source to yeah. dive into there and you can like so now I'll probably look at buying a book from this time period, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's you like can... an untapped source of knowledge that you can like, yo, this, this, yeah, this is wicked. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. I yeah. Like I was so like zoned in on that. The second half of that was so quick. I, I remember, did, didn't it? I remember pausing it for four minutes, like around here. Look, because that's where they beheaded the Roman soldiers. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, so I remember pausing it and thinking, this is going to be long. And then it was like, <laughs> literally, no, literally. Um, I actually, I'm in a weird position now because I don't know when part three is going. Imagine part three is like another year. Okay, I feel like he take, if he's making it now, it'll be a couple of months, a few months. Yeah, well, he's currently trending one and two on YouTube. These really? two videos are. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've seen him post it on his Instagram, I think, or... He's YouTube, I can't remember. Excuse me. 
They were wicked though, I really, really enjoyed they, them. They were really good. Thank you guys for putting us onto Oversimplified in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it goes without saying, we'll always do Oversimplified when it comes out, but I've said it four or five times, times now, but all credit to Oversimplified. Um, he does such, he does a, good such, job. such a great job. Um, and he's, he's seen to get better and better because he started off on a high standard, didn't he? Yeah. He's never missed either. He's never put one out and you think, that's all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even ones that would have been tough to do from this point of view, like the Emu War. Mm-hmm. You look at that and you think, yeah, it's pretty funny, but I don't know how good a video on it would be. And and that one was great as well. Yeah. And I think even ones where it's like... The French Revolution was a good one. I really like that one as well. I remember that one, yeah. yeah. Just feel like even though if it's part of the history where you think there's a lot of information to take in, I yeah. think because he makes it funny, he has a really good balance. Yeah, no, yeah, he's yeah, he's such a great job. I, I'd love to see what he's going to do in the future. I know he'll probably do all of these, but he's not as famous as YouTubers with like less subscribers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, that's probably down to the fit the area of field that he's in. Do you know what I mean? He's it's not, a very niche category of videos, isn't it? Yeah, but like people that have heard of like Logan Paul and KSI probably would never have heard of oversimplified, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a shame really, but I get that's the price that comes with this field. Yeah. It's entertainment slash educational, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas a lot of people on YouTube just want yeah. entertainment. I wonder how good it'd be at doing like shorts, like thirty second clips on YouTube or something for or like TikTok. Or... Yeah, like a little Yeah. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us. Honestly, it means a lot, man. Uh, we we enjoy doing these videos. Um, I've said it before, we don't post as much as I'd like just because we both work really long hours. And... Yeah, it's fine in the day when we're off together, isn't it? But like you said, you know, if you can find time, you could do the videos on your own, some yeah. different things as well. Yeah, I'll probably go back to doing some more videos on my own because we're just not getting days off together at this point, are we? No. But there's, other, there's bits of content that you probably are more interested than I am as well. Yeah, I really... So, obviously, hey, if, if you're American and you're in the comments... I've been kind of watching the run up to the elections in America. Um, so if you want me to do more American politics stuff again, because I enjoy doing that. Um, so if you, if you want to see me do more of that or send us some clips that way, I love doing them videos. I love controversial videos. I, I really enjoy them. Yeah, you do. You do. And, uh, but I, I watch stuff like that anyway. So if you want to go ahead, send them across, uh, go for it. And also, this is separate from the video. I've started playing NFL. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, just just the one that's free. I can't. I th- no, Steve Madden's <clears throat> NFL. And don't get me wrong, guys. I'm shit. I'm so shit at it. But I, it's, I've got this weird thing now where I'm really getting into playing it. So if any of you fancy a game or fancy sending me some tips or some videos to help me out, man, because I'm getting slapped up. Um, <laughs> no, literally. But um, I enjoy playing it nonetheless. It's a nice change from FIFA, which has kind of become a bit generic at this point. Yeah, um, you need something new, don't you, on the screen? Yeah. Although people that play Madden all the time say that's generic. Whatever. But uh, I've gone completely off topic there, guys. <laughs> Again. Um, look, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and it was great seeing you. Take it easy.